Thursday, April 6th, 14th, 2016. I'm Rem. I am Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, we're recording this in the future because Rim's off somewhere doing something. You mean the past. Yep. Boat times. Times on boats. I'm on a boat. Let's, Let's do this. this. I actually watched that video again randomly recently because I just I had YouTube playing music, like all these remixes. I kind of just let it go. Like, so YouTube was just playing its videos, just video, video, video. But I wasn't watching them. I was just listening to them while I was working on something. And suddenly, I'm on a boat came in. And I was like, all right. And then I just basically listened to their entire discography after that. Mm. I think my favorite song they've ever done is actually that Michael Bolton one. Uh, how, uh, did I, how did I know you'd pick that one? How, how could I not? When it gets to the Scarface stuff at the end, I can't help it. It's just too good. <laughs> I think my favorite one is Throw Shit on the Ground. Yeah. Well, that that's the most useful one in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> like, that one gets quoted the most. <laughs> you can't trust the system. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah. Dad's uh, not a phone. <laughs> I guess I'm at a uh, financial conference today, so I'm not actually here right now. <laughs> so that's my opening bit, and we're recording extra shows in the past for the future. So you got any news? No, because it's two days in the past. I don't know what's happening on Thursday. I can't do news about it yet. Not at all, but our news isn't supposed to be breaking news. You're not supposed to get your news from Geek Nights. Nothing has happened. It's been so boring. It's cold still. There's your news. It's warm now in the past, like warmer than it was. I wore sandals to work today. Uh-huh. It's not warm enough. I wore sandals and white jeans. It's too cold. Uh, maybe I'll bike to work tomorrow. It's Just too getting cold. up there. It's too cold. It's not that cold. It's too cold. Not like last weekend. <laughs> fuck that. Fuck, uh, fuck all this cold. That needs to be... 80 at least. So I did. So it, it, you know, for those of you who don't know, it got cold enough to snow last weekend in New York City, and this whole swatch. So I was at work on like Thursday, and I saw someone tweet at me, and they tweeted at me this weather forecast that showed snow in New York days in the future, and I assumed they were joking. I did not believe them until later when I got a New York City advisor saying, "Yo, dog, it's gonna freeze. So uh, take your plants in." <laughs> It's too cold. <laughs> yeah. So I got a news. This is something Scott and I talked about a bunch uh, in our lives, but it's we didn't talk not, about it on Geek Nights. It's not news. It's the oldest story in the book. Uh, March 20th, 2016 is not that long ago. Yeah. The specific, it's a specific, specific instance of Name a another instance where this happened in this manner. Uh, I can name be, an instance be, where that the would opposite give away, happened. That would give away a prank that I have been pulling on you for a very long amount of time. <laughs> but I would rather not give that away. Ah. So just keep it going. All right. All right. So, <laughs> Kraft reveals revamped mac and cheese 50 million boxes later. The story is that Kraft, for various reasons, changed the ingredients in their mac and cheese. Yeah. Uh, the new formula removed artificial preservatives, swapped out artificial dyes for a combination of paprika, annatto, and turmeric. Or turmeric, under development for three years. Blah blah blah. So basically, they changed the ingredients, and this probably didn't change the flavor. Mm -hmm. They just made the ingredients better. The, so it's telling that they used paprika and all this, not necessarily because of their flavor profile, but to make it look like cheese as opposed to what i guess it would look like without those things mm -hmm. i imagine craft mac and cheese looks hellish and inedible without food coloring in it it looks i mean the way it looks when you make it is golden right yep. i'm sure if you make if you make real mac and cheese it doesn't look golden it looks kind of whitish but then it has the uh the baking sort of like browning around the edges yeah but they did this and they had a big problem in the company, and apparently they debated this for a while, about whether or not to tell anyone that they were going to do it. All right, so let me tell you. So I used, for many moons, right, from like when I was very young until college, uh, or no, until Beacon Days, I drank this pineapple orange juice. It was Dole Brand, right? The one with the sun for Dole the Dole Brand. Dole Brand, pineapple orange juice specifically. And if you looked at the ingredients of pineapple orange juice back in the day when I drank it, the ingredients were like pineapple juice, orange juice, lemon squirt and then a bunch of other crap like you know so water and you know, yep. maybe sodium benzoate you maybe. drank this stuff like it was a, a religious libation this show was so good because not it basically had all the power of orangey but the pineapple cut off the sort of you know super orange flavor and sweetened it up 
But then this lemon squirt brought back the, you know, the citrus sting that you need. And it's like it would clear your throat out of any gunk and, you know, refreshing morning feelings came in like, ah, that's the same way better, way logic better than Tropicana orangey that drove people to drink and prescribe vinegar if they were out of lime juice to prevent scurvy. And guess what? That doesn't work. That doesn't work. But it tastes great. And it, one cup, eight ounces of it gave you 200 percent of your daily vitamin yeah. C <laughs> intake, uh, which is unnecessary. But no, it still funny. tasted good. In old Geek Nights, we used to talk about orange juice a lot. Like, I don't think you guys understand how important orange juice was to our day to day lives. Mm hmm. So anyway, at some point when we were in Beacon, they changed the formula, and it said on the carton, like, new, improved formula, whatever. And the difference here is that not only was it new, improved formula, but they drastically changed the flavor. The ingredient, number one ingredient, if you buy the stuff today, is apple juice, and it tastes mostly like apple juice. The squirt of lemon isn't even in there anymore. I don't know how much pineapple and orange there is, but not much. So at that point, I pretty much abandoned it and drank other juices. Uh, and I've tried to replicate that juice, you know, like just by taking oranges, pineapples, and lemon and combining them, and it doesn't quite taste the same. Now, it tastes better sometimes because it's mad fresh, but yeah. it doesn't, ta- doesn't taste the same. So, but the thing is, they A, actually changed the flavor, and B, told you. Here, they didn't change the flavor, they just changed the ingredients, and they didn't tell you because if they told you, but they didn't, you know, actually change the flavor, you'd still believe that it tasted different when it didn't. See, there's a third uh, uh, element to this, and a third sales direction. might go down and people start buying Bunny Brand instead. When uh, this, I mean, it's interesting how this is something that's largely forgotten among young people, but uh, we, you know, Coke, New Coca-Cola Coke. changed and became New Coke, mm-hmm. and they changed the flavor and they told everyone about it. Now, in that case, they all the research they had done showed that people overwhelmingly preferred the new flavor. Like, in, a bl- in a blind test, people preferred the new flavor. They would always say the new flavor was abjectly superior. Mm-hmm. And yet, when they told the public, hey, you all, we proved scientifically that you all love this new flavor, so this is the new flavor of Coke, and people went crazy, boycotted it, disaster. This was like one of the biggest corporate disasters in like consumer product history. Mm-hmm. To the point that they actually went back to classic Coke. That's why Coke Coca-Cola today will be like classic Coca-Cola. Every time you ask a question like, why does company do something so stupidly? They could do it so much better. Why don't they do it so much better? It's because th- th- most people on earth are morons. Living and- in the dark, blindly feeling their way through things. And they just, they hate change. No matter what the change is, change is the enemy, right? The status quo is the friend. So you can't change anything. So Kraft did the smart thing, which is... Yes, change it for the better, and that don't tell anyone, because then the morons will stop buying it. If they would have just started putting that better Coke in the Coke cans without saying anything, people would have been like, "Whoa, this Coke feels really good." Ah, uh. Yeah, uh, I don't so, know. Why, I don't know why they don't do that now. They, they especially, you know, but whatever. So basically, if you read this article, because I'm not, you know, you can read the article. I'm not just going to summarize it all for you. But what Kraft did is they changed it. They changed it, and they kept it a desperate secret. For a long time. Mm-hmm. Until they were confident that people had been eating the new one for a long time. Uh, no one noticed at all. And then they announced, hey, we've got a new craft, whatever. And guess what? Uh, we already sold over 50 million boxes and you've been. But they didn't make it. like a huge announcement. I don't know if they're TV commercials. I think the announcement was just like they did a the- new ad campaign. Oh, okay. At the after after it was out there for a long time, saying it changed. But it hasn't because none of you noticed. It's the, it's the same thing you've always had, but we did change it. So eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and the story. They, they didn't have to say anything ever. They could have just kept doing what they were doing. Yeah. So it's so the story is just an interesting sort of. Even if you know there is a smart right thing to do, or you know an answer to a question, if you interact with the mass market you sometimes have to do very counterintuitive things or hide information from people that is not relevant to them because otherwise they will make very poor, ill-informed decisions based on things that they literally made up. You don't need to know that. What you need to know is that if you're the kind of moron who opposes something simply because it's change, you're the problem in this world, fuck you. If you're the kind of person who, when you hear this something is now changed and improved and that makes you excited and you want to go seek it out, 
you are the good person who is the savior of this world. Now, I wonder if the fact that you had such difficulty in those early days, because you guys don't understand, Scott was like experimenting with different mixes of the three juices Mm -hmm. for weeks when he lost his recipe, like Mm -hmm. trying to recreate it. Uh, If they hadn't said anything... I sent them a letter and they didn't help me out. (laughs) If they hadn't said anything, would you have noticed... Would I have noticed, right? Well, it is a, because maybe it is the a, reason it may- is a very significantly different flavor, right? It's like I actually, uh, if I recall correctly, I bought it and drank it, and then said this tastes different, and then noticed the thing on the carton afterwards. But is it possible that the reason, because there's only three ingredients, like it's there's not that many options for your for your dosage here. <laughs> Is it possible that the reason you can't recreate that that flavor is that that flavor existed solely in the nostalgia post change? Your well, brain I mean, created an ideal that can't be attained. I mean, the only thing I have to reference the flavor now is my memory. I, I don't even have like a sample, so that I can't know. So you might have mythologized the memory of that flavor. But this was it on a but the, the original change happened at a period where. I had a container of the old stuff and a container of the new stuff in the fridge at the same time. True. I polished off the old one, and the next day I went for the new one. (laughs) And I said, whoa, what's going on here? Right? And that, you know, there are times where, for example, one time I went to Grand Central uh, to the Hot and Crusty, which is closed, by the way, and... Uh, I'm real sad about that. Like, I bought I some. Re- I, I bought. It I bought the one serving orange juice, and I started to drink it. And I went, "Ah, what is wrong with this one serving orange juice? Is it bad?" And I looked at it, and I had accidentally purchased grapefruit orangey, and I can't take grapefruit. It's too. It's too acidy, and it's no good. <laughs> and so, even though my brain was thinking the whole time, "This is orangey," and didn't suspect any. You know, I just thought it was orangey. I didn't. You know. But my my tongue did not lie, so there is an extent to which you can change something to where the senses will still detect change regardless of psychology. True, right? true. You can't put battery acid in the milk container, dr- have someone drink milk. it and go, oh, with vitamin R. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, things of the day. What do you got? Uh, it was another link. Uh, that I oh, you don't you. remember this too? Uh, I have to click on it to remember it. All right, so I can do mine first. So, uh, as you know, the one, the one of the there's one of the things that I hate and am displeased by more than anything else in the world is bike thieves. I've had my bike stolen multiple times. I know a lot of people had their bikes stolen. New York City is the bike stealingest place in America. It's a problem for a lot of reasons, and. This is a video, purportedly, now I do not, I mean, it looks pretty legit, and I was going through this guy's channel, and I am not making a claim that everything in this channel is 100% legit, but stun gun in bike seat prank in the hood, electric bait bike prank, karma, social experiment, is the video. Mm -hmm. And uh, the video is basically, he has a stun gun rigged with a cell phone hidden in a bike, and the stun gun is right where your balls are on a bike seat. So he can call a number, and the stun gun just starts going. Just what the fuck is going on? And then the video is just leaving the bike unlocked in bad neighborhoods, waiting for someone to eventually steal it, and then calling the number and watching them get their balls shocked. It is extremely cathartic to watch this video. And uh, while I'm not necessarily a fan of vigilante justice, I'm not that opposed to this level of entrapment. The level of, here is an easy crime that would harm a person if it was a real crime, but it's actually a trap that will not kill them. It's not like there's a shotgun in the bike seat, but will cause them significant discomfort. So while I enjoyed this, there's another video in the channel that I saw right after that that I have to call attention to. Car bomb bait car prank in the hood. Public bomb scare prank. Instant karma. Best pranks. Okay. This guy has this fucking rigged up fake look at like a bomb. Like three sticks of dynamite and a really long set of like really... You know those fuses you buy if you make your own fireworks? Like the the ones that go real slow and real big like... Yeah. So it's rigged up where when he triggers it, It just looks like a bunch of sticks of dynamite with this giant fuse and a detonator, like, getting ready to go off. And apparently he has a lot of videos of using this fake bomb as a prank. One of them was he put it on a remote control car. So when the fuse hits the end, it doesn't explode? No, just nothing happens. It's just wooden sticks? Yep. 
So, like, one of the videos is this dude mounting this giant fake bomb to a remote control car and driving it around at people, <laughs> which is funny in its own. I mean, obviously a little mean, but just the idea of that is kind of funny to me. Use it in a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make way. Let me get on the roller coaster next. Swerve, gentlemen. <laughs> but... Basically, the what what the gist of this video is purportedly, and the video is pretty funny, is he le- he parks a beater car in a bad neighborhood with the window down and the door unlocked, and there's some valuables laying around in the car, and in the back seat it's just this fake fucking bomb just sitting there, and he waits for someone to uh sit down in the car because a car thief will just steal the car, but and a thief of opportunity will not like stand around outside the car. Like, people who regularly steal from unlocked cars, they know what they're doing. If you see an unlocked car, you open the door and you sit down in it and close the door. That way, you're in the car. Unless someone walks up to the car or is the owner of the car, they're not going to think anything wrong with someone sitting in a car. Somehow I think this person knows a lot about bike stealing and car stealing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is not a high-quality person. Well, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're a regular uh, modern-day Batman. Sure. So the way this works is that after they sit in the car, and there's cameras like rigged up in the car everywhere, they'll wait a few minutes or a few seconds and then trigger this. So the person turns around, and usually it's some variation of, what the fuck? Holy fuck! Followed by like running out of the car, screaming, dropping stuff. It's pretty great. <laughs> but he did, went one step further. The car is rigged so that the handle on the inside of the car will not work. Mm. So they have to jump out the window. Mm. So uh, I invite you to enjoy these videos. Mm. So this guy, uh, someone, I guess, who follows his YouTube channel, this is BigClive.com. What's up, Big Clive? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Somebody found a USB charger similar to the ones we get from Anchor that let you charge five USB devices. I'm holding one in my hands right now. This one charges six. Whoa, daddy. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I I want to work that does ten. So, but this is like some off-brand crappy one. And someone bought this somewhere, and when they went to use it, they noticed, like, huh, this shocked me when I tried to use it. And it's like, well, that can happen. No, it shocked me like my muscles were, like, contracting. Whoa, shocked me. whoa, 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 whoa. This shocked me like when I put the wire near something, there were sparks, like when Rim was in that cage place. Oh, yeah, when I, t- when I touched, when I grabbed the door to the server cage to open it, and then... I stopped because I thought an earthquake was happening, and it took me a while to realize that I was being shocked with one phase of a 220 line. So Big Clive knows about electronics, so they sent this to Big Clive, and he made this video examining this uh, USB charger. And apparently, you know, when you make an electronic device that, say, plugs into the wall, you know, you have AC power coming from the wall, right? Yep. And Mains power. Deadly power. Deadly power. But on the other side, you've got USB, which is like, handful of volts but if you make a <laughs> shitty device i mean it's just wires right if the wire the, from the wall the circ- touches the wire that's on the usb <laughs> on the circuit board there'll always be sort of this divide between the part that uses the high powered electricity and the part that uses like the low power dc with the transformer in between in a big gap so that there isn't any short circuits of electricity jumping across and uh apparently in this usb charger that gap was not sufficient, uh, you know, and Big Clive goes to investigate exactly what's wrong here. The moral is don't buy dodgy imported, like, Chinese nonsense USB chargers. They might actually kill you. Yeah, this video, though, the problem with it is it's like 28 minutes and 20 seconds long. That's you my kind of video. Fast forward most of this because it's mostly him trying to, like, break the case open for, like, five minutes. So there's a channel I follow that isn't, like, I Editing enjoy Big it. Clive, Editing. There's a channel I follow that's edited better than that, but Mm -hmm. it's basically just this guy tearing apart shitty imported Chinese electronics and showing how dangerous it is. Mm -hmm. And they're really long videos, but he really goes into detail. That's the guy who showed me about those shower heads that will shock you if you get close to them. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, there was a story actually a few months ago of a woman, I think it was in the UK, who was killed by an iPhone charger because she had headphones plugged in and this thing just mains line and killed her straight up. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Yeah, don't buy cheap USB chargers, guys. Buy, when it comes to electricity... At least Anchor. Anchor's the minimum for get, a USB charger. Get like, that's the, the, na- the bottom. Get, get the name brand biz. Yeah, Sorny, Magnet Box, <laughs> Passanonic. <laughs> if you can't tell, I've been watching a lot of Simpsons lately. Yeah. 
In the Meta Moment, next weekend, we're going to be at PAX East 2016. We're doing a panel on Sunday at 3.30, Atari Game Design. We're going to be there Thursday playing games in the awesome tabletop area. Their megathon is off the hook. Uh, the book of the book is Oryx and Crank by Margaret Atwood. Uh, pretty much done with Wheel of Time temporarily, so I'll actually read that book. I'll pro- probably start it like right around PAX times. Mm. Uh, otherwise, the Patreon hit its first goal, the Geeknize Patreon. So I am going you to You can re- all stop giving now. You hit your stupid goal. Everyone no, can there's go another back to goal. Zero. You don't need that goal. If you hit the next goal, I'm going to make videos detailing the full Geeknize process, like all the filters no one needs I that. use. Just go back to zero. All the, uh, all the everything. No one and needs that. And if you hit that. the next goal after that, we're going to live stream every episode of Geek Nights you don't need video that on either. YouTube. Just, just go back to zero. It'll be fun stuff. You can go back to zero now. You got your beta episodes. We're also stepping up the Rimley Review, so Emily and I are going to be reviewing uh, a few things in the coming weeks. You don't need that either. And I'm re-releasing all eight or possibly nine pre-publication beta episodes of Geek Nights with commentary remastered in the Patreon over the next few weeks. Right. You got what you wanted, so you can cancel now. Nope, now there's going to be so much more. The more the higher it goes, the more I'm ramping up the shit in you there. You don't need any of that garbage. It's going to be amazing. No. Your life will be much better off without that stuff, in fact. <laughs> so I've never been on like a princess cruise or a carnival cruise or anything like that. And while several people in our lives have tried to convince me that they're worthwhile, I am highly dubious of that kind of boat time. Mm. I mean, it seems... As far as I can tell, those cruises are pretty much just hotels turned sideways that you can't leave easily. Yep, with that buffets. Move, that move. With buffets but, and norovirus, and you can't leave. But they provide you, yeah, with much food. And, you know, you go to a hotel, usually you don't, like, go in the pool. But when you go to that hotel, you can't, you can't leave and go to attractions near the hotel... You do all the in hotel stuff like spas and pools and shit. Now and my suspicions were confirmed concerts and parties and whatever. By other people I know who work on cruises who were like, "Yeah, it's mostly just old and or fat people." But it was double Some confirmed. Families in there. The last time I was in Sydney, and I think I talked about this in Geek Nights. I was hanging around in Some Sydney. Basic I was, folk. I was running. I was doing a long run like all around like the, the Opera House area, and a big cruise ship was getting ready to depart. So the people who were going on the cruise were all showing up. Let me guess. You're going to talk about how old and fat they were. They were so old. How, and how so fat were fat. they? <laughs> it was like, I would say the people who were, because it was weird. The staging area, one, there was this giant line of people who were, I guess, standing in line to use the elevator to go up because they didn't want to walk up the stairs. And up there, there was like a restaurant. There was a little, like, you could check your bags. There was a lounge and a bunch of bars. I think there was a hotel even. Like, people were staying there for a few days before they even got on the cruise ship. Pre-gaming. And 95% of the people appeared to be either or both. These are not mutually exclusive. Over the age of 70, maybe 65, maybe 65, and over 300 pounds. Mm. It was amazing to behold. And while the argument that has been made to me by many people is that the beauty of a cruise is that if you go with like a lot of your friends, like 20 or 30 of your like really close friends, then it's like those college days where you're basically in this hotel floating with pools and all the nonsense. Other people are taking care of everything for you. And you basically just hang out with your friends on a pleasure cruise and ignore all the other people. But couldn't you do that in a place that doesn't have all those other people to begin with? Or couldn't you just do that in, say, Vegas? I decided that if... Because I, I went to Vegas with Emily not that long ago for a wedding. If you're going to do that, just go to fucking Disney World or Vegas, and you get all those say all the things that people say you can get from a cruise like that. Vegas is warm. Yeah, Vegas is warm. If shit sucks... You can just go to a different hotel. It's not like you're stuck on one hotel in Vegas the whole time. You can time. get a flight to anywhere on Earth. Yep. And it's otherwise, it's like it's all the accoutrement of a cruise without having to be stuck on a boat full of norovirus. Mm-hmm. So have you ever had a boat time? you ever been on a boat? Uh, never been on a Vegas boat like I've that. I've never been on a cruise ship like that. I've been on... All right, what's the biggest boat you've ever been on? Uh, I went on like this tiny cruise... It was like uh, we were in high school. We went on a trip to D.C. And then part of the trip to D.C. was that one night we had dinner on this boat. So we got on the boat and we ate dinner. And so it had it basically was like a boat that you would get like, um, you know, to have like a, a wedding on or something. Only, you know, right. 
and it, like the main area is like a ballroom. Yep, yep. And then it goes out and for then like, the you, whole but, night. And then you go up on deck and it basically went up and down. You know, the, the river that's outside the National Harbor, right? Yeah, yeah. It basically went up and down that river and then we got well, off. Well, didn't we do the same that you came with when we saw was Joko? This was bigger than that boat, but same kind of boat. Yeah, we did that. The mini Joko cruise where basically we just got on a boat with a bunch of cool people and there was a concert and drinks and hanging out on a boat going up and down the yeah, East River. Yeah, imagine like that same exact deal, only all high school kids and boat was two or three times as big. I actually did stuff like that a lot when I was younger, but I grew up in Michigan where there actually is a significant boat culture. Like there's a lot of canals and places where people just own boats. Like they'll have a boat in their backyard and the canal just like goes behind all the houses in the subdivision and everyone has a boat parked in their boat parking lot behind their house and they can take the canals and get out to the lakes and stuff. I mean, at summer camp, I did a lot of rowboat, canoe, kayak. I never did anything with a sail on it because uh, no one taught me how. <laughs> but I guess it's interesting that like here in New I've York- been on really big boats that were just docked like uh you know oh like in south street seaport like the pirate ship kind of things well i mean like like in groton connecticut like i went on you know giant submarine it was just there right but living here like the only boats i'll go on in new york city are like that joko thing where they're like there's a lot there's a common event people will do where everyone gets on on a boat you can go in the circle line yeah there's also there's also some restaurants that are just docked boats that don't move but like people will rent a boat and do an event and you pay money to do that event or you're a rich person and you own a boat. I think I've been on like a slow river boat that might have been Disney World or was it somewhere else? Nah, but, all you know, those places have you a know slow the river kind boat. with the thing in the back that goes chick 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 like a paddle boat? No. River paddle boat? No, like the Mississippi River style. Yeah, a paddle boat. You're not paddling like, you know. No, Scott, that's called a paddle boat. Isn't, paddle wheel. Isn't it called a river boat? It's just like a giant mill in the back. Paddle boats have the paddle wheels on the back. No, not like that. Yeah, not like that. You're thinking of one with the one giant wheel like in Maverick. Yes, yeah. like that one. So, but what I was getting at is that here, pri- like boats are a rich person thing, or a bunch of people get together and basically rent a boat and charge admission to cover the rental of the boat. Mm-hmm. But where I grew up, boats were like a lower middle class, middle class thing, like a lot of people I knew own boats well, and use de- them regularly. It, well, see, it all depends, right? So if you live in a place where there's a lot of bodies of water, it's cheaper to live near the body of water, yep. and you can get all kinds of, you know, getting an actual boat is kind of cheap. Maintaining a boat is what's really expensive. Yep, but if your house only costs 100 grand and it has five bedrooms... And it happens to be on the water... Like, you can afford to buy a boat and spend all the... Like, all your boat money and maintenance right. but if is you live, less than, if like, you rich live guys, in rich a car. suburb that's not near any kind of lake or anything or any large body of water, having a boat is only, you know, something a rich person can do. Yep, but if you live in New York... You can't afford to live here and have a boat. <laughs> Unless you're a, so rich, you can afford to live here and have a boat. So it's interesting, that perspective, because where I grew up, like so many of my friends had boats that a common thing I would do in high school is one of my friends would be like, hey, we're going to have a party on the boat. And a bunch of us teenagers would just get on a pretty big boat. And the one slightly wealthier friend who either had permission from his parents or scammed like 30 bucks out of all of us so he could afford to like refill the tanks. They wouldn't notice that we took the boat out. (laughs) They would just take the boat out to like the middle. Like we'd go way out into one of the Great Lakes and just hang out on a boat in the middle of the night. On a boat. Yeah. And that, those are some of my best high school times. There's something about like I've always enjoyed that sitting in a boat in the middle of the water, way out at night, where there's all black around you. You see, like, cargo ships way off in the distance, and you see the shore And then they lights. come and smash into you. Boom. No, they don't come and smash. Don't go into the shipping lane. The fuck's <laughs> wrong with you? <laughs> at least everyone who took the boats out knew what they were doing with the boats. <laughs> I never went out with the people who... That's the thing. With a car, you know, even though you look around this country, right, and people are driving everywhere. Look around the world. People are driving everywhere, and they can't drive for shit, but they do it anyway. Yep. But they manage to get by even though they suck. With a boat, you can't get by if you suck. Also, there's a lot more to know than there is to know well, with a car. You could get by. Like, if the boat's already out, out of the docks, you can get by knowing nothing pretty easily unless there's, there's any kind unless there's even so, and even the slightest thing out of the ordinary right? if you just have to make the boat go and change its direction and it has a steering wheel you can get by yeah because you'll turn the steering wheel and fuck it up and you'll go way off course but there's nothing to hit right but as soon as you get into a situation of any kind like 
There's something not exactly 100% right with the boat. Dead. You're just dead. Right. Dead. Everyone's dead. You know, the boat is having a trouble or, you know, the boat is leaning one way or, yep. you know, there's someone coming near you. It's like, well. And I'll put it this way. Like, we talk about how everyone's a shitty driver. There's a fish. Most people who drive cars cannot parallel park at all. Like, they can't do it. Well, most places you don't have to do it, so they don't learn how and they don't make anyone learn yep. how. So actually taking a moderate sized boat and getting it back into the dock without fucking everything up is about like parallel parking. You got to know what you're doing. And if you like use boats at all, it's real easy. Yeah, you don't want to crash into the dock. Yeah. You don't want to miss the dock and be too far away to tie up to well, it. Well, mostly there's not a lot of space in there and there's a lot of other boats around to navigate. And also the steering of a boat out in the middle of the water is real easy because if you're way off, it doesn't really matter that much. But when you have to maneuver it precisely, the precision needs to be so tight. Like, and it's, so you've got the water momentum. is also affecting your boat. It's not like a car where nothing affects its movement. It's yeah. just sitting still. The boat will move on its own if you just don't do anything. Yep. And also things like so you're going forward at a pretty good clip, right? There's no brake on the boat. It's not like, well, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> boat's going to keep going forward. You start to turn to the left. You're going to start spinning while you're still moving forward. Yep. And I've watched a lot of people fuck their small boats up because they don't actually know how to maneuver it in close quarters, or they vastly underestimate their speed and just don't know about boats. Mm -hmm. So, but it was, but again, I grew up in a place where well, everyone knew about boats, so we're boat people and we go hang out on boats. There's and some lakes there. I actually do wish that boating was more accessible financially in the New York area because there's a lot I, of water here. I would really enjoy I don't want to touch the water, but I wouldn't mind being in a boat. I would I really enjoy taking a boat out with like like say like you, me, Emily. I see some boats going down the river and man, those are some fancy fucking boats. I saw a boat that was basically like evil Bond villain the boat and I'm like, damn, I should just hijack that motherfucker. But like imagine on a nice night with the fireworks, right? We go out and we just like do a long leisurely circle out, like seeing New York in the distance, the fireworks in the distance. I don't think they'll let you boat when the fireworks are there. Well, not right where the barges are, but you go off a ways, and you can. But imagine like that, like hanging out, like I'm driving the boat, you guys are all playing a board game all right, on the rent, deck. Rent a boat then, big money man. No, <laughs> I don't have that much money. <laughs> a one night rental. One night rental of a big boat is actually not that cheap, and I am not going to say that my boating skills are adequate to this area because well, i mean first of all we know people with boating skills and two you can always rent someone to go with the boat yeah the right way to go is to rent the kind of boat that did like that hall and oats thing we went to on judith's bachelor party mm -hmm. well, you didn't go on that i think because no. we were just drinking but basically it, it was it was a real funny boat time so it was the same kind of boat as the joko thing and it was a hall and oats tribute band okay which i'm into Okay, so, I like hollow notes. But right. there was another boat that was bigger that was filling up next to us, and there was something else going on that looked way better on that boat. Mm -hmm. But there was a weird sort of aside. There was a stark dichotomy between the people getting on the boats. The Hall and Oates tribute band boat was basically all yuppie, hipster-looking white people. The other boat was all cool people. Mm. That other boat, like whatever party was happening on that boat, looked amazing. And that boat went off into the sunset. I heard the music coming from that boat. That's the boat I should have been on. Why didn't you but get no, on that I was boat? on the white person boat. The white why, person. Didn't, why didn't you get on the cool boat? I would have had to jump and swim for it, and I don't know if they would have let me up. You couldn't. They weren't close enough. You couldn't jump and grab it. It was too late. The little, boat was little leaving. Stowaway action. <laughs> <laughs> but the Hall and Oates boat went up and down the East River, and. No one went to see the Hall and Oats. We all just hung out on the deck because that feeling of being on a boat with the shore in the distance, looking up at the sky, the fresh breeze, drinking something, hanging out with friends, good times. Smells like water. Yep. I really enjoy it. Smells like times. East River. Eh, it smelled okay, actually, for some reason. Yeah, wind, <laughs> wind blowing the right direction. Yeah. Some, if wind's blowing the wrong direction, you don't want that Jersey air coming back across. <laughs> <laughs> what about little boats? Yeah, you, you ever go like kayaking? I talked about it, summer camp. You know, every summer camp has a tiny lake that always has, you know, like uh, a kayak, a yep. canoe, a rowboat. You, you know, know what I always enjoyed? How a lot of kids of we talk above. about skill. Kids fucking don't know how to use canoes. Windsurfing. I know how to use a canoe. Yeah, most kids don't seem to know how to use canoes, and rafts are way harder than canoes for people who don't know how to use them. Well, I mean, a raft sucks. It's a big rectangle. It's just yep. like it sucks, right? And you can get a, a, your your raft can just spin around in a circle. Yep. Way worse than a canoe does. At least you're not. At least a canoe has a point, so you know which direction is forward or backward. Yep. Actually, I think the hardest thing that the kids have the most trouble with an actual like traditional rowboat like the slightly wide where you have two people well in a rowboat i think is just less efficient so you need more s muscles to move it 
Yeah. And it's heavier, right? It's less, you know, dynamic. They're also, yeah, they're also really unstable. It takes, yeah, it takes a lot more, like, you know, power to move the rowboat. Like, if we had a race, you know, you could lose, it's a strong person in the rowboat could lose to a somewhat weaker person in the canoe just because the canoe is better. It's like, yeah, you, you know, someone's got a Ferrari and you got a not Ferrari. Yeah, I do really enjoy kayaking, but I don't like tandem kayaking that much i like my own kayak yeah i don't know i don't understand the two-person kayak well, two-person kayak, kayak is, is more... the whole point of the kayak is that it's like ah finally the one-person boat not well, this stupid two-person canoe action the two-person canoe is good well the canoe but the two-person kayak is good if you're doing distance kayaking like what if you're kayaking like all the way up the river to yonkers or like beacon or something well that's the other thing with the kayak is that it's so tiny you can just like throw a rope and just like you know binge off someone else's kayak <laughs> right it's like i'll just tie myself to your kayak and take a nap but i really enjoy kayaking actually it's a sport i kind of miss that i feel like i should get into again i like kayaking i just have no arm strength so i can't really do anything except let the water push me yeah you know what you need to do you know you're biking so much you got strong legs you got to do that to your arms then you can kayak because if you're strong or i could just not do that but if you're strong (laughs) kayaks can go real fucking fast yeah what kind of hurry am i in well, it's just really fun to go really fast in the water like that. You gotta I, go fast. I like some, I like some lazy river action. But I'm thinking about I don't the summer. Go fast. I think I want to go out to Jamaica Bay and rent a kayak and go poking around in all those like <clears> marshes and everything. Are you allowed to go in this? Isn't, yeah. there, isn't it a reserve? You're not allowed to go in that. Some water? areas you can go, some you can't. But there's a lot of kayaking out that way. Mm. Like you can just go out and rent buy kayaks. a kayak and tie it to the roof of your car like a yuppie, uh, whatever. No, you you fucking like go out there and rent a kayak and use it there and then leave the kayak when you go home. I've never seen a kayak rental over there. There's a lot of kayak rentals in New York. Actually, there's places here you can get kayaks and go up and down the river. Mm. I mean, you're not gonna get that river water. I've on seen you too much. I've seen kayak in the Hudson River. Like you can next to the Intrepid, there's like free there's like kayaking you can just do. So as far as I can tell, <coughs> there's an old thing that they set up where there are campgrounds that are accessible to kayaks and canoes and things all the way along the river from New York City, like way up, almost all the way to Albany. Mm-hmm. So you're then they're spaced such that if you have are a reasonably proficient uh, goer, you will get to one every day and be able to camp. So you're going to bike up the Hudson River. Well, the Hudson River changes direction. So just time it with the tides. Mm-hmm. Good luck with that. Yeah, but people do it all the time, actually. It's a really common hobby. They're mad strong. Yeah, biking. I mean, you can you're bike You're going to end up, also, else. no matter which direction the water's moving, you're going to touch Hudson River water. Yeah, so I was re- I learned about that unrelatedly recently. There are different standards for how dangerous water is based on whether or not... Yeah, it's not the fucking Ganges, all right? It's not going to kill you, but, but you don't want to touch it anyway. Spl- Hudson River water is in a category where you do not want to immerse your body in it, but... Uh, occasional contact, like in kayaks and canoes, totally fine. Like, negligible danger <laughs> of anything. Yeah, but you'd still be better off not touching it. I think you're, it's, there's more danger eating bacon on a regular basis than there is in that, so I might take, I might do the kayaking trip. But don't you eat bacon on a regular basis? Uh, I'm going to amortize those dangers. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. And the patrons for this episode, in order of the amount of money they give us in continuing basis, are... Rebecca Dunn, Nicholas Brandau, Alan Joyce, Heidi McNichol, Amanda Duchette, James David White, Christian, you can guess what bullies called me in high school cunts, Jess, MyStady.com, Sean Hayworth, Mechanical Mind, William Eisenrose, Jeremy Miner, Spartacus, 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 Kimberly Bachelor, Kachar Tavishen, Jonathan, shout out to Dick Kuntzman, Romer, 
Joshiro Joestar, Tyler Eller, Sean Yeager, Clinton Walton, Ren from New Zealand, Robert Lee, Ryan Perrin, Drew Openlander, Ray Lavelle, Brian Ch Cedroni, Rochelle Montanona, Finn Eric Silverod, Kent Melt Steel Beams, Kinetic Man, Aaron Cerise, Chris Midkiff, Chris Knox, I expected the Spanish Inquisition, Sam Cordery, Daniel Redmond, Chris Haddad, Sean Klein, Chris Reimer, and Thomas Hahn. As you know, we hit the goal. I am literally remastering all those beta episodes of Geek Nights. Uh, it was actually somewhat difficult because they were recorded on incredibly bad hardware with incredibly bad processes a long, long time ago. But I remastered the first one. I am listening to it probably on my way to work tomorrow as a podcast. And then I will be able to record some commentary on what it was like uh, listening to us do literally the first Geek Nights thing we ever tried to do. Some of it's funny. Some of it is haltingly horrific to listen to. But it is very interesting to hear what we sounded like because it was it, most of the time it doesn't sound like us having a natural conversation like we did in that era. We actually sound more natural now, even though that natural sounding conversation and banter we have is actually sort of an act and kind of synthetic. So it's weird that when we were more natural on the show, it ended up being halting. And over time, we sort of rediscovered the way to do what we would do in our normal lives, but in a performance setting. And it, you'll, when you listen to the episode, you'll see what I mean once I actually read some commentary and uh, say it in front of a microphone. But that's neither here nor there. We'll be at PAX East next week. Uh, might not do a full set of shows next week because of that, but I will release at least that first beta episode of Geek Nights to all of you who are backing us on Patreon very soon, hopefully over the course of the weekend. And now I leave you with something odd. About, so we got two new DS games this week. No, because then you're saying we, it's like... But it's like there's a third person here. They're part of the conversation. I'm not addressing them directly, but... Yeah, but even... All right, even then, your selection of words, whatever, but the There's way no other way to bring that up with, that's with not the, stupid the, 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 the tone of the way you're saying it. I say it that way anyway. Uh, it doesn't sound right. It's that's not, how I talk. No. It's, it's a blatant radio guy talking. No, it's not. I think you're hung up too much on this radio guy thing. No. It just feels awkward. No, it doesn't. It that's the way I talk. It feels awkward when to say stuff like that, and it kind of throws it If off. Pete were sitting here right now, I'd be like, so we got two new video games this week. No, you'd be like, so I got the, uh, the Castlevania. <laughs> no, game. I'd probably say, like, so we got Trauma Center in Castlevania. There you go. He got one, and I got the other one. That way we don't have to buy them both. See, that's better, the way you said that. The only difference is I didn't say we. And the, the, the tone of the saying, it was a little different, because, because you I were actually to... talking to no, me. No, because I actively talk weird. No. That's not the way I talk. No. I think you're too hung up on this. It's just, if, if, it's just that, like, it's not really a hang-up, like, I think it, it hurts the podcast, is it, it just makes it, the, the talking awkward. I like it doesn't to me. It does to me. Well, you're not used to this. I guess I'm really used to speaking in public. I'm used to speaking in public. Uh, you seem not to be. It has nothing to do with the public speaking. It has to do with the... Because you, you, like, when you speak on a panel or something, that's the kind of language you always have to use. And yeah. while you're speaking to this each other normally... This is like, or it's, it's a, like a recorded conversation. So. No, because a recorded conversation in and of itself is kind of dumb. Yeah, but that's what... All the big, uh, that's what the podcast is about because you know, people don't like the radio, that's why they're listening to podcasts. No, they don't like the radio because there's nothing they want to hear on the radio and they have to listen to ads on the radio, right? But the that's one reason. But the other thing is that if you notice the podcasts that are stuck in the, the radio, like the still the normal radio format, are, aren't listened to so much. I don't think we need to worry about that. <laughs>